in 2024. Tonight, two of the Republican presidential candidates will face off in a debate in Iowa. As WMUR's Jackie DeFusco reports, this is just days before that state's caucus. This time, only two candidates will be on the debate stage in Des Moines with just five days to go before the Iowa caucus. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley will go head to head for the first time. Former President Trump was the only other candidate to qualify, but like previous debates, Trump declined to participate. Recent polls show Trump is leading in Iowa by more than 30 points, with Haley and DeSantis sparring for second place. Both are trying to emerge as the main alternative to Trump, and our political analyst Mark Sandalo says that tonight's one on one clash is a chance for them to sway undecided voters. So both of them are going to one try to figure out how they win the anti-Trump vote over anti-Trump Republicans and I think the big issue is who is most electable I mean I think both of them are going to make the case that they have a better chance of beating Joe Biden than Donald Trump tonight's debate is scheduled to kick off at 9 p.m. Eastern time and the Iowa caucus is set for Monday in Washington I'm Jackie DeFusco WMUR News 9 in just over a week now, qualifying Republican candidates will be on stage for the WMUR ABC News primary debate. You can watch that right here on WMUR on January 18th at 9 p.m. A number of hearings on abortion bills at the State House today. Coming up, the issues taken up by the legislature. Our messy storm system pulling away and not a lot of action happening off to our west. That means we'll sneak in a few quiet days of weather. We'll talk about it for the last into the weekend coming up. And at 530, the trial of a woman accused of abandoning her newborn in the woods now delayed. Next, the concerns about expert testimony in the case.
time now to check out how traffic is flowing around the state. You're taking a live look at 93 in Hooksit from the rest area there. You can see traffic flowing smoothly here. In fact, 93 and the Everett are in good shape from the state line to Manchester. Only minor delays on 101 in the usual spot in Bedford right now. 93 and 293 moving well around the Queen City. No problems on 9389 or 393 around Concord and on the seacoast. There are multiple closures along 1A because of the flooding. 202 is closed in Barrington at Church Street due to flooding as well. At the State House, lawmakers heard a series of bills on abortion today, including a constitutional amendment protecting abortion rights and a ban on abortion after 15 days of pregnancy. As WMUR political director Adam Sexton reports, both items face long odds of becoming law. Abortion rights once again up for consideration at the State House. Democrats are bringing forward a constitutional amendment to guarantee abortion access in New Hampshire up to 24 weeks gestation. This actually does keep the sanctity of the patient provider relationship at the forefront of this discussion. And that's exactly where it should be, not with legislators. Anti-abortion activists spoke out against the proposed amendment, saying it would lead to more abortions. Thank God our mothers decided for life. And please be aware of wolves who prowl about in sheep's clothing preaching woman's reproductive health care as a reason to abort unborn babies. A constitutional amendment needs 60% support in a narrowly divided New Hampshire House, making it a long shot to pass. Also facing a steep path to passage is a bill filed by some Republicans to ban abortions after 15 days of pregnancy. We got to stop this. If it's 15 days, 15 weeks, we got to stop it. Actually, it should be from conception. And really, I'll admit that 15 days is technically from conception. I think we just need to recognize that, you know, that is not something that a woman will even know she's pregnant at that point. This being an election year, the abortion issue is likely to remain in the headlines. Both Democratic candidates for governor were here today. We need to make sure we are doing everything we can uh, to ensure that individuals have access to health care. It has become increasingly dangerous to be a pregnant woman in the United States of America. In Concord, Adam Sexton, WMUR News 9. Now, meteorologist Matt Honig with your Stormwatch 9 forecast. Well, the past 24 hours have featured some very active weather here in the Granite State. Thankfully, things quieting down for the moment, but we're already looking ahead to another weather system that could move in here by the time we get to the weekend. Of course, this having big impacts along the coastline because Hampton Harbor earlier today reached major flood stage with its highest tidal gauge level on record. Now, the water levels will not be quite as high in the coming high tide cycles through tomorrow and Friday. But look at what happens by Saturday afternoon. Yeah, we could be talking about moderate coastal flooding in spots along the seacoast yet again as the waves get churned up, the winds kick up again, and here comes another messy weather system for the start of the weekend. In the near term, things are quiet right now. We have a blend of clouds and clear skies out there, a couple spotty showers in a few spots, but most of those are now winding down. This is the view in the Milford Oval. Notice the pavement is most Mostly dry there, but there is a lot of standing water from last night's rain. On top of that, it was very mild today, so a lot of snow melt taking place. Any standing water that's left untreated overnight tonight will likely freeze up. Still 44 in Milford right now, but watch what happens overnight. We dip back into the 20s in most spots, right around freezing Manchester, Nashua, and over toward the coastline. So that's the concern for some slippery travel early tomorrow morning. Some pockets of black ice uh, likely out there to start the day on Thursday. Now tomorrow will feature uh, fairly quiet weather. Early in the day will be the brightest with some peaks of sunshine, but later on more clouds fill in even a couple flurries and snow showers up north. It will be chilly up north tomorrow with temperatures below freezing, but elsewhere it's upper 30s to low 40s. Another seasonably mild early January day is in store. Any lingering clouds this evening clear out overnight. Tomorrow kicks off with a good amount of sun, except for up north, especially in the higher terrain. There will be clouds locked in there just about all 
day long. Very weak weather system swings through tomorrow with more clouds and a couple northern snow showers through Thursday afternoon and into Thursday evening. It is quiet over most of the country, but notice all this moisture coming in off of the Pacific. Some rain and snow falling in northern parts of California into Oregon and Washington. That becomes our next system by the time we get to the weekend. Even right before the weekend starts by very late Friday night, things break out here with a period of snow and wintry mix changing over to rain. Yeah, where have we had heard that before? Very similar system coming in uh, in the next couple of days. Could be several inches of additional heavy wet snow, especially northern and western parts of New Hampshire. That's going to create some difficult travel conditions into early Saturday morning. And yet again, watching that high tide cycle Saturday afternoon. Friday itself is dry with a lot of sunshine, even through Friday evening, just some clouds filtering in. But during the pre dawn hours of Saturday, a burst of heavy wet snow breaks out as warmer air moves in. The snow changes to rain from south to north. And much like this system that we saw late last night, the snow will hang on the longest in far northern parts of New Hampshire. That's where we'll likely see the most amount of snow. So we'll call it an impact weather day for Saturday. Sunday looking better with clearing skies and turning much cooler into early next week. Another member of President Biden's cabinet visits the Granite State. Next, the reason for featuring Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona's trip. And at 530, a new program to make sure millions of eligible students nationwide get fed this summer. Why some states decided not to sign up. Once again, one of President Biden's cabinet members was in New Hampshire, which makes four in three days. WMUR's Jamie Staten has more on the point of the visit by the Secretary of Education. And, you know, she said, I touch the future I teach. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona meeting with educators in the Krista McAuliffe Room at the New Hampshire offices of the National Education Association. It's an honor to stand next to this. 
um, because I know what she represented. The meeting was to specifically discuss and herald the recent results of the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. It forgives the remaining balance on someone's federal student loan if they've worked 10 years in public service, like a teacher, and made loan payments each month. 3.6 million people have had their loans forgiven in the last 2.5 years. Over $200 million in debt relief was awarded to folks under the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. These are teachers, nurses, police officers, veterans, just in New Hampshire alone. Lori Hayes graduated from law school in 1992, $75,000 in debt. With interest, the total repayment would have been $132,000. Her career included government work for over a decade, and she recently received this notice in the mail. The final $100,000 of her loan was forgiven. I didn't believe it. I was really in shock. Hayes is grateful, saying it will allow her to retire one day, but says the program needs to reach even more people. 3.6 million people is just not enough. I think more people deserve to take advantage of this program. So the parade of cabinet members through our state in advance of the primary continues. Secretary Cardona, the fourth in three days, although he would not comment if he's here to help President Biden's re-election campaign after Biden announced he would not campaign for the New Hampshire primary. While uh, the Hatch Act really prevents me from getting into, you know, political uh, conversations. The secretary had meetings scheduled at Dartmouth College this afternoon. In Concord, Jamie Staten, WMUR News 9.